message from God's Word for our sermon today is from the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament, chapter 61. Please stand to hear God's Word. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. This is God's word. Maybe may be seated. Dear friends in Jesus, just like that, it's over. Sunday school children did a great job sharing the message of the Christmas story with us. There's a few of them here now. Can we thank them for their program today? They spent weeks practicing and memorizing and just like that, it's over. Isn't that kind of how Christmas goes? Just like that. It's over. Have you ever noticed in the Christmas story how, how quickly it ends? If you just think of the shepherds. The, the angels appear to them. They run to Bethlehem. They see the baby Jesus. They go back and tell everybody. And, and then what? And they're back to watching their sheep. Right? Just like that. It's over. I bet some of you are, are worried about that already. Even though Christmas is, is two weeks away, I bet some of you are already worried about how quickly it's going to be over. December 26th is always a hard day. Isn't it? Maybe in your family you can draw it out a little longer. So then January 2nd is always a hard day. Right? Then what? Back to life. Christmas is always over. Just like that. Of course, if that's the case for you and me, that, that it's really a problem. It's really a problem because God wants the message of Christmas to be something that lasts in our hearts and in our lives. If December 26 feels like this big letdown when all the best things have, have come to an end, then we're missing what Christmas is really all about. There's all these sentimental aspects of Christmas that are good things, but they don't last. The Christmas programs end. Their relatives go home. The cookies all get eaten. The presents are all unwrapped. And then what? God wants us to have something more. He wants us to find something deeper at Christmas. He wants us to find something that's going to last throughout the whole year. And so we should listen to what Jesus says about it. The three little verses of our lesson today are words that Jesus spoke in the book of the prophet Isaiah. And it's really an amazing thing because did Jesus come on Christmas before or after the prophet Isaiah? He was born after the book of the prophet Isaiah. And yet, in the book of Isaiah, we actually have Jesus' own words describing what he's going to do. How is that possible? When was Jesus' start? Well, he was born at Bethlehem at Christmas time, right? But when did Jesus start? He has no start, right? Jesus is God with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity. When did God start? Forever. He has no beginning. He has no ending. And so in these amazing verses, Jesus, 700 years before he was born on earth, Jesus, who has always existed as the true Son of God, Jesus tells us what he came to do. Because Jesus came, there's something we can hold in our hearts forever. Jesus starts like this. The Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. Because Jesus came, there is good news for the poor. Isn't that what all of us need? Good news? There's a fancy word in the Bible that means good news. Do you know what it is? The gospel. 
That's what our sermon next Sunday is going to be all about, the gospel. So you have to come back. But here's a sneak peek. In the gospel, Jesus says what the kids told us today, for God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's the good news Jesus came to proclaim. In a different place, he said the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. Luke 19, verse 10. That's, that's the good news Jesus proclaimed to the poor. So are you poor? Are you sinful? Do you feel lost? Do you sometimes feel like you have nothing? Well, Jesus came to live and to die and to rise to save you. Whoever believes in Jesus shall be saved. Because Jesus came, there is good news for the poor. Do you think that ends on December 26th? No way. Here's the second thing that Jesus tells us. He says, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Because Jesus came, there is hope for the brokenhearted. Is that you? The good news of Jesus is what heals our hearts. Sin breaks our hearts. Sin makes it feel like there's a piece of our heart over there and another piece over there and another piece over there and there's no way we can bring it back together again. But Jesus can. Jesus takes that peace and he, he forgives all the sins. Jesus takes that peace and he heals the hurt. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. Because Jesus will never break your heart. Jesus will never let you down. Jesus will never leave you. Because he came, there's hope for the brokenhearted. There's so much more. Jesus says that that he came to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Because Jesus came, there is freedom for the captives. How often do you feel like you're a, a prisoner? How often do you feel like like you can't stop that one sin no matter how hard you try? How often do you feel like you can't get away from that guilty feeling no matter how far you run? There's certain sins that especially trap us. Maybe like alcohol or pornography or bitterness or anger or despair. If ever you feel like a captive, because Jesus came, there's there's freedom for the captives. Jesus came to set us free. Whatever sin it, it is that seems to control you, whatever vice it is that seems to have you in its grip, Jesus came to set you free. You don't have to be a prisoner to anything or to anyone anymore. Because Jesus came, there's freedom for the captives. Because Jesus came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Because Jesus came, this is the the year of the Lord's favor. In the Old Testament, there was this thing that was called the year of Jubilee. You ever heard of that before? Every 50 years in the Old Testament was supposed to be the year of Jubilee. In the year of Jubilee, people sounded the trumpets, all debts were canceled, and all slaves were set free. Sounds like a nice thing, doesn't it? Especially when you have a mortgage. I could go for a year of Jubilee, couldn't you? And so you ask, when, when is the year of Jubilee? When is the year of the Lord's favor? Well, because Jesus came, now is the year of the Lord's favor might have felt like this last year was a disaster. It's not the case. Now is the year of the Lord's favor. You don't have to wait for some year in the future for God to love you. Maybe this next year won't be the year that you get rich. Maybe this next year won't be the year that you start to feel better. But you can know this. Because Jesus came, now is the year of the Lord's favor. All of that is what wipes our tears away. (laughs) Have you noticed a a progression in what Jesus says? He was sent out to proclaim good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and then he sends this. To comfort those who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. Because Jesus came, there is comfort for those who mourn. (coughs) Excuse me. I heard a story a couple years ago. There was a, 
an 11 year old girl who wrote a letter to Santa. This girl's grandparents had just died in a house fire. And so this is what she wrote to Santa. I shouldn't get any presents. Can you take my sadness away? Is that heartbreaking to hear? Wouldn't it be great if instead of presents, there was someone who could take our sadness away? Well, there is. It's not Santa. It's Jesus. Remember Jesus' promise about heaven? He says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Revelation 24, verse, 21 verse 4. Because Jesus came, there's comfort for those who mourn. In fact, Jesus takes our sadness and he turns it upside down. He promises he will bestow a, a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Because Jesus came, he turns funerals into weddings. That's really what Jesus is talking about here. It's, it's like when you wake up at a funeral. Ashes, mourning, despair. But Jesus turns it into a wedding. Crown of, of beauty, oil of joy, garment of praise. Because Jesus came, funerals can turn into weddings. Jesus takes that, that grief at the loss of a loved one and he turns it into joy when he tells us about eternal life that's waiting for those who believe in him. He takes that despair at a loss and he turns it into praise when we see God's grace to us. Jesus once told his disciples, now is your time of grief, but your grief will be turned to joy. John 16, verse 20. Because Jesus came, funerals turn into weddings. And it's all leading up to this. What Jesus says, it all leads up to a big climax. He says this. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting for the display of his glory. Because Jesus came, you are like an oak tree. Isn't that awesome? Yes, an oak tree. That's what I always wanted to be. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? What is this about? It, and the huge climax is that you're going to be like a, an oak tree. Think about an oak tree. We have a big oak tree in our front yard. How many storms has that oak tree been through? How many changing seasons has that oak tree seen? And yet there it stands, firm and strong. Why? Because God's made it strong. God planted it. God watered it. God has made it strong. That is what Jesus promises to do for you. He promises to make you strong in the storms of life. He promises to, to give you strength even as the seasons change. Because Jesus came, you are like an oak tree, established, strong. And that's it. That's all Jesus came to do. Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus did a little more for us? Come on, right? Who are we kidding? This is amazing, isn't it? If ever you hear broken, feel broken hearted or poor or you need comfort, if you're grieving or mourning, if you feel like a prisoner or a captive, if you have ashes on your head or despair on your heart, do you hear what Jesus has done for you? Jesus came to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, to comfort those who mourn and to provide for those who grieve, to give a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. This is what Jesus came to do for you and me and it doesn't end on December 26th or January 2nd. It's, it's true for you today and tomorrow and forever. So what's the catch? It's got to be a catch, right? You hear Jesus talk and you look for a little asterisk. Aren't we trained to look for those? To look for some fine print? Well, if you look at Jesus' words again, what conditions are there? He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted as long as you don't go back and mess up your life again. Is that what it says? 
No. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives one time and one time only as long as there's no relapse. Is that what it says? No. He sent me to provide comfort for those who mourn as long as they've been a good little boy or girl over the past year. Is that what Jesus says? No. There's no conditions, not on the grace of God. When you see the baby in the manger, remember this. Because he came, there's good news for the poor. Because he came, there's hope for the brokenhearted. Because he came, there is freedom for the captives. Because he came, now is the year of the Lord's favor. Because he came, there is comfort for those who mourn. All because he came. All because he came. That's what Christmas is really all about. There's so many sentimental things that bring us joy, but that joy doesn't last. Jesus, Jesus does. Maybe this Christmas Eve you're going to find yourself all alone, sitting at your apartment. But you know what? Even if you're all alone at your apartment on Christmas Eve, you can sing Silent Night and you can have tears of joy in your eyes. Because it's true. It's all true. He came for you. He has saved you. And when you take the Christmas tree down this year, you don't have to have this knot in your stomach. When Christmas is all over, you don't have to have this weight on your heart because even though Christmas is over, Jesus is never over. That means there's always good news for the poor. There's always hope for the brokenhearted because he came. Amen. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we're thankful for the children who shared the message of Christmas with us today. Just like their program coming to an end, Christmas comes to an end so quickly. We can leave the Christmas season feeling hopeless, feeling like everything is over. And yet that's not true. You and your word long before you came, you you tell us what you came to do, to preach good news, to give hope, to give comfort to give joy. Dear Jesus, as we celebrate Christmas these next weeks, help the true meaning of Christmas to take root in our hearts. Help the things you came to bring be with us, not only at this time of year, but throughout the year. Help us to find joy and peace and hope in you. In your name we pray. Amen.